and this is our second tutorial for Virtual Property Architect. And what I'm about to show you is our smart tools. People often ask and they look at a, one of the designs built in Virtual Property Architect and they think it takes days to create something like the design we're looking at here. When in fact, due to our smart tools, it actually a design like this may take uh, you know maybe a little more than an hour. And it's it's this idea that we have these smart tools. Uh, let let me give you a demonstration. I'm going to start a new design. Call it test. We're going to give it a zip code because I'm going to be putting it online. Let's turn on our grid. And let's start with the first smart tool under the building tab, which is a house. First thing I'm going to do for this tutorial is turn my grid spacing to three feet just to make this easier. And I'm simply going to draw a house. So I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a very simple shape for the most part. And because I use the house tool, here we have a house. Now I can edit this house by double clicking and I'm going to change the roof types. And now I have the shape of a house. Granted, a very short house. So let's, uh, let's bring the wall height to 18 feet. And what we've got here on the right is our properties panel. It allows me to add corner trim to the house. I can change the color. I have my wall material, my roofing material. I can change my roof pitch, my overhang. If I need this house to float in the air, we can certainly do that as well. What I'll do is just rotate this. Let's get it in the light. So this is, the, this is how our smart tools work. We drew a very simple shape. It knew it was a house, and therefore it behaves like a house. You can see it in plan view as well. And then I can go through and further edit the house based on the requirements. And we can certainly do the same thing in perspective or 3D. And then I can go in and add my windows, my doors, lights. And again, even the lights, what's neat about these guys, put a light on the house here. The light will actually stick to the wall. It knows what it's supposed to do, and it does it. So when we go to nighttime, there we, there's our light. Maybe I want this guy to be a little brighter. Maybe add a little yellow. And there's our light. So we have some more interesting smart tools. So let's go down the line and let's see what we've got here. Back to my building tab. Got our windows. What's great about the windows, they also stick to the wall. But perhaps this frame, this uh, natural wood frame, is not what I want. So I can go to my material options. And I'm going to turn the frame to a different material. So I may want it simply to be white vinyl, match the trim of the house. And there we go. Now if I grab another window, I can do that. I could select both windows by holding control and change the window frame for both. And we'll make it this antique jade stained color. And there you have it. Doors work the same way. So let's play and let's put a small little deck over here. So I'll turn my grid on. And what I'll do here is grab my deck tool. I have my snap to grid on. And voila! Now we have a deck. Now, if this was a real life scenario, I, sh I wouldn't want these railings on the back, so I'll double click to get into edit mode, or I can use the edit tool here on the left, and I can mouse, put my uh, cursor, my mouse over the railings, and begin to toggle them away. Now, I could also put steps, so you'll see that we have a width of 6 foot, a rise of 8, a go of 10, and an offset, and an offset is the position in which the steps lie in relation to the rest of the deck. So there we have it. Just one click and now we have deck steps. But 
I'm probably going to want to elevate this to the second floor. And what we'll see is the deck stairs respond accordingly. So that's how we're able to get uh, these, these pretty dynamic designs done very quickly. I can then go in and decide I want to modify the rail, the frame, uh, beam angle, beam spacing. And right now I'm spacing them out, so and now the legs come to the corner. And then again, I can go in and change the material. Let's, let's have fun and make this a natural black wood. And that's how that works. Now our walls, we have uh, walls, patios, and other hardscape items here. They essentially work the same way. Draw some simple points. Now we have a wall. Now some neat things we can do with this wall is we may want to add a wall cap. So I'm going to go a flat tile cap. And there's my cap. If I wanted to, I could get really crazy and do some interesting things. I could change the points. Uh, I'm going to make this a corner. And I can do some pretty interesting stuff with this wall. I can change the width. I can change the elevation, the height, do it all as one, or I can modify each individual point. Um, something that's really clever about our walls is let's just make a piece of topography here. Now, so what I've got is a piece of terrain. Now, I may want to take my wall and say, and turn it into a retaining wall. So I can hit this uh, cut terrace option and there we have it. It actually cuts the terrain. It's one click. Alright, let's look at some other smart tools here. Patio tool. Our patio tools have a height have a facing material. They can have a coping or an edging. Let's change the material so we can see what's happening. And there we have a patio. And again, I can change the shapes. Maybe I want a curve here. And I can do this in real time. I can see it in plan view and, or in 3D, however we, we choose to work. And the rest of our tools essentially work the same way. And that's just a short introduction to smart tools and how we get some of these designs that um, you've seen here on the website or from other users. And it it's sort of uh, gets to the mystery of how they're done so quickly. Well, anyway, thank you for uh, joining me today, and uh, look out for the next tutorial shortly.